Hi everybody, welcome to WillyNillies.com. Today we're going to show you how to build a GLH-250 wing. Uh, for video purposes, we've already removed the parts from the sheets. Uh, doesn't take very long, just a little tab you have to break off. And we've laid out all the parts to build a wing half. Uh, we have a leading edge spar, uh, and the leading edge spar has this cutout right here. Uh, that's very important that that is put towards the leading edge. The trailing edge bar doesn't have a cutout, so make sure you have that on the forward side. I've already laid out the ribs in the order that they are put in. Uh, rib number one has an engraving on it. Uh, it goes at the very middle, at the, at the very end. Uh, rib 2A and rib 2 go in the same spot, and then the rest of the ribs are all number threes. Uh, it is, I recommend that uh, before you start assembling the wing to uh, gently put each rib in each slot. Uh, you'll have to put just a little bit of pressure on it, not too much, uh, but one, the wood thickness from the, from the supplier varies a little bit each way and sometimes it's necessary to just try to fit it before you assemble the whole thing. I've already done that, so I won't bore you with, with that. Uh, so the first thing we want to do is grab your leading edge bar with the taper on the, on the one end. That's, that's the center of the wing half. And uh, we'll grab wing rib number two. Uh, wing rib number two goes in the very first hole slot and it doesn't matter whether you put the rib either way, it's a fully symmetrical airfoil. So it can be, there's no right side up, right side down. Uh, no matter how you put it on there, it'll be correct. Uh, now that we have rib number two on there, we'll go to the next slot, which is a number three rib, and do the same thing. Slide that on there. The next rib, number three also. Slide that on there. Next rib, number three. Slide that on. Number, next rib is a number three. Slide that on. And the last rib doesn't contain a full slot, so we just leave that off for right now. The next step is uh, you'll take the trailing edge and make sure that the angles line up with the ribs. You don't want to try to do it that way because it just won't work. So it's pretty simple. Don't try to slide it fully on each the first rib. Just get them all started in the slots. Again, don't try to fully seat one rib at a time because you will break the balsa. But if you get them all gently lined up and get just barely get them started, once you, once you have it to that point, then you can just gradually move each one until it's fully seated in the slots. And you'll know when you're fully seated in the slots because the leading edge of the rib will match up with the leading edge and the trailing edge will match up with the trailing edge. There may be just a slight shortness on the rib, but that's okay because we have to round the leading edge uh, for flight performance. Once we've done that, uh, included in your kit and the parts are these eighth inch square spars. We'll go ahead, oh wait a minute, I got, a hold, I got ahead of myself. Next you'll take rib 2A and it gets, it doesn't have its own dedicated slot but it goes right on the inside of rib number two. Carefully line it up. I didn't pre-fit this one, so it's a little tight. And it get it nestles right up against there. It acts as a doubler for your servo mount, and it also acts as a shelf to glue the center sheeting to. Okay, now that we've done that, we'll go back to our eighth-inch square spar, and uh, I'll just gently 
get it started in, in place. You'll want to make sure that these eighth, eighth inch bars are a little bit longer than what they need to be so that there's a little bit of overhang on, on each end of the wing. So it's not too critical to make sure they're lined up with the very end. Just make sure that each end overlaps just a little bit. And just gently push it into the, into the slots. Just a little bit at a time. Don't try to force it all at once. Okay, now that one's in there and fully seated. We'll take the other eighth inch bar and we'll do the same thing on the other side of the wing. Okay, we'll keep just gently pushing till they're fully seated. Okay, they're fully seated. Now, we can take that, that wing tip rib, number three, that doesn't have its own dedicated slot, and with the spars on here, it will lock itself in. Again, just gently, and don't try to force it all at once, just gently push it in, into place. Sometimes you just gotta work it a little bit at a time. Make sure everything's lined up. Okay. And then uh, once you have that in place, we want to make sure that it's straight up and down on the end because there's no additional wing tip that goes on the outside. So we want to make sure it's nice and straight. The very center rib, number one, can be put in place now. And gently put it in place. Don't try to force it all at once. Okay. Okay, now that that's in place, you also want to make. Oh, I knocked it off. Let me do that again slide right in there now okay now that that's in place you want to make sure that it's perfectly straight up and down also uh, there's no dihedral in uh, the GLH wing you can add just a little bit uh, it aids makes it a little bit uh, more gentle to fly uh, I prefer it flat um, if you want to add dihedral add just a just a touch of angle to the rib to make the wings bend up. Uh, but again, I prefer it flat because it's a race of plane. It's supposed to go fast. It's supposed to look fast. So that's the way we do that. And as you can see, we have, we have assembled the whole wing and haven't put a drop of glue on it yet. Uh, I spent a lot of time designing this wing uh, and this assembly so that you didn't have to have a bunch of T-pins and special building board and make it as super simple as possible hence the series name super simple series okay now that we have this assembled like this uh, take thin CA glue uh, cyanoacrylate and uh, make sure you get a capillary tube they're worth a little bit of expense that they cost and you just simply go to each joint and put just a tiny drop and with the capillary action, it'll wick all the way around the rib and secure each one. And as you can see, it just goes really quick. And then uh, I usually give it just a second uh, to set up. Uh, most of the joints are so tight that, that it cures instantly. Works really, really well. And then once I've done one side of the wing, I flip it over and I will do the same thing on the other side. Just a tiny drop. It's really not necessary because the drop from that we just placed on the other side has mostly wicked around and secured the other rib. After 
forgot to do the wingtip rib. Quick drop. Careful where you put your fingers. Okay, now that we have the ribs all secured with glue, uh, we can do the same thing with the spar, the center spars. Just a tiny drop is all you need. And the glue will wick all the way around and through on each spar. over and we'll get the center rib. Okay, now rib 2A has extra holes in it. Uh, that was done on purpose for lightning and glue access. Put a drop of glue in each one of those holes and it will wick around the entire rib and secure it to rib 2. Okay, you'll notice this funny little part in the kit. This is necessary on your wingtip. You have to install it on the inside of your wingtip just like this. Now the, because of, okay, you get it lined up like that and you'll take your glue and glue it in place. my thumb glued with it. Okay. In case you didn't know, when you glue your finger accidentally to your wood, don't pull. Do a twisting motion and most of the time the glue will release and you'll do minimal damage to your to your balsa. Okay, the reason for this is reinforcement for when you cover it with the, with the heat shrink film. If you don't have that brace there, when you cover it, your rib will bow in and it just doesn't look nice. That's mainly just there to keep the covering nice and tight. So as you can see, we've completed a half of the wing. Okay. Now all you have to do is take your sanding block. If you've got a, a whole bunch of ex excess, you can take a knife or a razor knife and trim off the excess. You want the main spars to be flush with the ends. So we'll do that, cut those off, and then just take your sanding block, and usually just a few swipes, and it's all nice and smooth, okay, and repeat on the root rib. Okay, uh, the center section sheet uh, is, real, is already laser cut, it's already fit to size. Do not glue, glue that in place at this time. Uh, go ahead and build your other wing half and uh, secure it, the two wing halves together before you put these in. Uh, start with the, the top sheeting or the bottom because again, it's, you can do it either top or bottom. The wing doesn't matter which doesn't care which sides up, which sides down, because it's a fully symmetrical airfoil. And then after you've secured that and uh, sanded, uh, this is your wing hold down. Uh, there's a dowel, a little piece of dowel that will get secured through the hole. It's included in the kit. Once the wing is fully assembled. It gets glued right on the front and the dowel gets secured through there and the bulkhead already has the dowel hole lined up so once you have your fuselage built everything lines up and it slides right in. So it makes it real easy to mount the wing. It's a bolt-on wing with the GLH. Uh, the Sport and the Super Sport and the Barnstormer have uh, rubber banded wings so that's even easier uh, once you have the center sheet 
cheating on the wings joint, uh, this part gets glued right on the very back of the wing. And then you'll notice there's a hole right there. That's to, uh, to be able to mount your screw to hold the back of the wing on. Uh, the aileron has already cut the size and everything. Uh, we recommend using a covering type hinge, uh, which means that you will bevel the leading edge of the aileron at 45 degrees. And it's best to line it up with the edge of a table and carefully, lightly sand until you reach that 45 degrees. And then you use your covering material as a hinge. Uh, it makes it really easy, uh, real efficient. It doesn't let any air go in between the aileron and the wing. Another, another point that you'll need to have before you cover the wing, you will need to install the, the servo into the wing. Uh, there's one per aileron. Uh, once you install the servo into the wing, you can cover the wing. Uh, we do su supply a servo horn cover that you can glue into place and takes up, takes up the covering. I prefer just to poke a single hole for the included uh, wire push rod. I had some right here. Uh, we include a uh, pre-bent uh, with a Z-bend push rod and you just poke a hole and you hook it into your control arm and then you finish it off to match up with your control horn. Uh, we also include laser cut uh, control horns. Uh, they work really, really well and I think you'll like them. Uh, if you have any questions about the build process for this, uh, please uh, send us a message. Uh, we'd be more than happy to help you. Uh, leave comments below if you have questions. Uh, the Super Sport and uh, the Barnstormer wings uh, build exactly like this. Uh, the Barnstormer wings are constant cord, so there's no sweep back. Uh, they're just straight wings. Uh, they're even quicker and easier to build. Uh, use the same slot and tab process. Uh, you don't have to use a fancy building board. Uh, the Super Sport wing is a tapered wing and you can build it as a forward taper or a rear taper. Uh, we'll cover that wing construction uh, in another video. So I hope you enjoyed this video and may the winds be gentle, the sun be to your back, and God bless